Hey, what's up studs? Ryan here, or m &R Productions, with a review of a set that I really had no intention on purchasing. It's the Lego Wonder Woman 1984 DC movie uh, set, and it's set number is 76157, Wonder Woman vs. Cheetah, the official name, with 371 pieces, three minifigs, for a retail price of $40 in the United States. And that being said, shout out to Just Too Good and JV Brick Fanatic for helping me acquire this thing, and it is the Lego Wonder Woman 1984 DC movie, uh, Wonder Woman versus Cheetah set with 371 pieces. It's set number 76157. And as a pure Lego fan, this set interests me on a couple of levels. First off, the box art. It's very different than what you see on most Lego sets. Most Lego set box arts show off the actual set. This looks more like a board game type of box art to me and probably to you as well. You have this beautiful sunset or sunrise in the background with two minifigures facing off against each other. Just above that, you have a perfectly placed Wonder Woman 1984 logo and the Lego logo centered on the box. So it's just very different than anything you usually see from Lego. The other thing that really compelled me to purchase this set is the fact that the movie got pushed back and there's a small chance the set could get pushed back anyway. So I figured I'd pick it up while it was currently available and not in three months when it's available. So I don't think that's gonna happen. I think this is gonna and continue with this regular release schedule. Bash and Flash was telling me he thought it could get pushed back, so it kind of made me like panic purchase it, even though I didn't want to buy it anyway. So that's what happens when you're a Lego fan. On the side here, we have Wonder Woman in that like golden wingsuit outfit. Not going to be quite the, the same color there, but still looks quite nice. No cheetah on the other side, unfortunately. On the back side of the box, it shows the actual build. So again, the front side of the box does not present anything other than those two figures that you're getting in the set. So this kind of looks like a telecast station to me. You have a guy broadcasting his video with this giant satellite dish there, which is actually quite a nice build and all those pieces are printed. There are some stickers on the set. We'll get to that in a moment. And another thing that appeals to me about the set is kind of like a Yavin 4 vibe about this set. Um, I don't know, just kind of looks like a little Yavin 4 to me. Obviously other than the figures and this big satellite on top, it just does kind of fit that aesthetic. So I think I like that about it. So first up here we have Wonder Woman. And like I mentioned, it's not gonna be that same flashy gold color that you see in the actual film, but it's actually going to be something a little bit different. She has this very nice uh, wing piece that connects onto her neck, and what I really like about the character is they molded her helmet and hair into one piece, which looks really good, and the hair actually flows around and down over that wingsuit piece, which is really neat to see. So it's a little bit awkward looking to a degree, but still, if you imagine she's in motion, it actually makes a lot of sense. Her actual torso, you can kind of see a little bit of what looks like a bald eagle kind of built into the torso there, which looks really neat. But other than that, it's a figure that doesn't particularly excite me personally. I just don't really care about Wonder Woman as a character that much. There's the uh, back of her head there, a little bit of an angrier look than the front side, which is more of a happy-go-lucky. And again, here's a good look at the inside of that dual molded helmet hair piece, which is probably only ever going to be used for this character, but still looks pretty damn dope, to be honest. Next up is Cheetah, and having just watched Tiger King, I am really stuck in that frame of mind. <laughs> just leave it at that. You have what they've used as a uh, tailpiece for some of like Lego's uh, CMFs before, but now here on the Cheetah character, it's rubberized, so you shouldn't have to worry about it snapping unless you really uh, cut it with scissors or something. You could probably get it to come apart. The hair piece looks a little bit awkward on there, not gonna lie. Obviously, it's probably what it's supposed to look like but still um that is just a weird looking hair piece to me it's just scary it's just, anyway removing said hair piece will reveal a second face on the back side so you can get two different looks one look that's not super evil and angry and one look that is very much super evil and angry that back torso print is also really nice you see the front torso print pretty chiseled out torso there i wonder what workouts cheetah is doing so pretty nice figure but next up is my favorite figure and that is our TV reporter guy. He kind of reminds me of Andy from The Office. I don't know if you guys kind of get that vibe, but that's the vibe that I get from this character. Maybe that's why uh, I like it so much, but he has this beautiful looking torso with kind of like a flannel shirt on, got the tie underneath, just really clean looking guy here. Nice clean cut hair piece. And if we remove that, we should have two faces, one on the front with a, a smile and the one on the back, very worrisome, like something has gone wrong. So nice figure and definitely my favorite in the set just because I don't have an attachment really to the named characters, honestly. So Wonder Woman, Cheetah, and this news reporter guy are gonna be your three figures for the set. So this is the actual build that is the set. And like I said, it's not featured on the front of the box art. So there's a potential some people may buy this set 
not really knowing what they're getting into, which is kind of a neat concept to me, although I'm sure most people aren't looking for that and they'd turn the box around and would see that this is what you get in the set because they wouldn't buy it otherwise. But yeah, very kind of a neat build. Uh, Yoffin 4 is what it really reminds me of. I'm not sure if you guys are getting that same vibe, obviously other than the big radar dish, but it, it's a really neat looking set. And honestly, you could buy a few of these and put something cool together. But uh, they have one really cool thing that I like off the bat here, and that is this here camera which is just really neat. It's one of the more accurate looking uh, t television cameras I've seen Lego uh, put out before. So that's kind of a nice little inclusion. And you can just kind of throw that in with your reporter here who unfortunately doesn't have a microphone. He's just kind of talking. It kind of works, I guess. I mean, on the box, they just show him talking in the doorway there. So it works, I suppose, but it would have been cool if they'd given him a microphone. Then again, I don't know if that's accurate to the scene. Like, I feel like if this was Lego City, he'd be holding a microphone, but obviously this is not Lego City. So we'll get that out of the way off to the side because that's not super important to the rest of the set. Uh, we'll start with the exterior. Like I said, very nice looking design, has some nice angles to it, kind of looks like it's built into the side of a mountain or the side of a hill or something that's kind of muddy, which is kind of an interesting look. So you have the actual like human built structure here, but I feel like the dark tan is supposed to be like muddy or mountainous and not like actual stone or brick or whatever this tan, lighter tan color is supposed to represent. So that's kind of neat. You have this small little side bit, which is really just kind of this pole here with a little danger sign, which is a sticker um, and then a couple of little things just kind of poking out that don't really do anything. You have a little railing here. You could throw a minifigure on here if you want. There's space, but again, it's just not a super huge thing. It's just a nice addition onto uh, what would otherwise be a rather small footprint for this little base of operations. You have what looks to me like an outlook. Unfortunately, obviously the build isn't big enough to have uh, an actual spot for an outlook, but that looks like a spot where you would look out into the world from inside a bunker, which I really like that look for this bunker type build. I think that's another really interesting aspect of this set to me. There's also a sticker on the door down here that says restricted access area. And that's kind of nice. So that's kind of the bunker entrance and it's very well built into the mountain or cliff side or hillside here. And the other thing I'll say is that these uh, pieces are actually built at a 45 degree angle, which is kind of a neat little fun building technique that they've got on here. They just put them on the uh, two by two tiles with the stud in the middle and then turn them. It works out pretty well. You have a sticker here with a little minifig hand showing you need to put your minifig hand there to get it to let you in and then also put in the keypad or whatever. So that's kind of a neat little nod instead of a real hand, they use a minifigure hand. I like that. You'll find some plants throughout the build as well, just kind of making this look a little bit more natural and hidden into the hillside here. The biggest piece of plantery here is on the right side of the build. Nice, I guess. And then you actually have a little spider down here, just one of the regular Lego spiders. There is this little clear thing here. And what I believe this is for is so you can make one of your characters uh, fly. So it doesn't really do anything other than just hold one of your characters. So you can have Wonder Woman or you could have Cheetah on it just flying around. It's actually quite nice for display. If you wanna have them fighting or whatever, you could do something like that. It looks a little ridiculous, but you know, it actually could work out pretty well if you just wanna display your set like that. And I quite like the way that looks actually now that I have it set up like that. So I might keep it like that. The interior of the build is quite skimpy. The interior of the build is not very well flushed out in my opinion. There's just not a lot going on here. You have this kind of like center area that doesn't really do anything. Maybe it's just an area to talk around, I'm not really sure. Um, and then on the inside though, there actually are some nice stickers. You have like an FBI logo sticker, which I actually really like and kind of want more of for other things. And then you have some TVs inside the bunker, which are like monitors, which I assume are for broadcasting the news or seeing other news broadcasts going on while you're doing your news broadcast type of thing. And then of course you have the giant radar dish, which is going to allow you to broadcast your news broadcast very easily. So the dish on top is actually all printed. It's not stickers like some people may have worried about. They're all the same exact piece, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up or anything. It just does take a little bit of work to get them all to line up at a reasonable angle to make it look somewhat good. So it looks nice when it's done. A lot of gold on that. And they actually have a very nice use of what I think is like the tranquilizer gun from like Jurassic World. So that's kind of a nice piece to see being used here on the radar dish in the center there. And if you haven't noticed the radar dish can uh, move up and down and around. So it actually has some nice uh, movement to it and you can spin it by hand on top here. It's not that hard to actually spin it on top like that, but they actually uh, nicely included a feature in the uh, set here where you can actually spin it with this little knob. So you can actually spin the whole thing 
by just twisting the knob. So that's not too shabby. I'm hoping this angle works, but that is the connection for the knob inside up underneath the little building. So while I don't find myself attached to the actual characters in this set, I must say I'm quite impressed by the build of this thing. I think it's very interesting as kind of a hidden spy base or hidden operations base and create stuff out of that for yourself instead of going with what is actually in the movie there with Wonder Woman and Cheetah. I love the build. I love the aesthetic of it. You could even take this take this uh, radar off and turn it into your own thing. Like that's what is really appealing to this set to me is the possibilities uh, out outside of what it actually already is. So it's a nice build. I'm gonna give it a 7.9 out of 10. I know, odd rating, but that's just kind of how I feel. There's some odd things, like obviously the gold colors don't match. I don't really like when they do that, when they mix the gold colors. Also say these little things can get just dropped down pretty easily and then uh, they'll get caught up, which is rather annoying. I mean, there's little things like that that are annoying on this set that I think add up, but overall it's pretty decent. So 7.9 out of 10 is gonna be my final score. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. If you want to pick this set up, it's 40 bucks in the US and you got to look for the weirdest box art on the Lego aisle. Yes, weirder than Hidden Side somehow. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.